and two stoplights. <laughs> it's very, very fun. Today, we are going to, um, I'm going to show you how to make fingerless gloves. And, and these are the simplest fingerless gloves I have ever found. They don't have um, any skills that you don't already have except one, and that is where you make the thumb hole, you make flat fabric. It's not hard to do, but it's a really good skill to, to have with your machine. So, um, and it's just a little bit of it, so it's not hard at all. The bottom is a hung hem. You could do a pico if you wanted. These have a pico. The top is, it looks like ribbing, but it's mock rib. And um, so it's very, very simple to do. Um, you can, these have 10 rows of mock rib, and these have 20 rows of mock rib. So you could make them even longer. If they go over your fingers and you need to use your cell phone and text or something, you, they roll back very easily. So they're great little gloves. Do you want me to show them here? Yes. Okay. So here's with 20 rows, and here's with 10 at the top. Okay. So what I've done so far, because the parts that you already know how to do, I'm sure, is I cast it on. I did a hung hem with 20 stitches, crank 20, hung the hem. You all know how to do that. And then I knitted 30 more stitches. Okay? It's on the pattern. And um, so now at this point, we stop at six o'clock and we're going to start the flat fabric. The flat fabric is going to happen right here where I have marked between, this is a 60 cylinder between needle number 60 and needle number one. Okay, right there. So the key to knitting flat fabric is you don't ever want to knit between needle number 60 and needle number one. And the way you avoid that is by lifting needles out of work. And you're going to need to lift about one crescent worth plus four or five more. Okay. Then I'm going to reset my counter to zero and I'm going to do 18 rows. It's going to look when you look in the cylinder like it's a really long thumb hole, but the weight pulls it down and uh, it's really not. Um, I used to, when I first made one, I thought, oh my gosh, I stopped at like 12 because it looked like it was big enough and it wasn't. So you need to go to at least 18. If you want a really nice big thumb hole, do 20 rows. Okay, so right now we're gonna crank around and another trick to this is you want to stop when that last needle that's in work knits. If you go further, you're going to kick off this counter and it's not going to be accurate. Okay? So we're going to click, do knit until uh, the last needle knits, and then we're going to go in the reverse. Oh, the other thing I should have mentioned is this project is done with the heel spring engaged at all times. And that's because you don't want the middle where that thumb hole is to suck in because the, if, you, if you pop that um, heel spring on halfway through and do that, do that hole, the stitches are gonna be smaller and it's gonna look kind of like an hourglass, okay? Don't want that. So just, just adjust your tension to start with so that it's the right tension with your heel spring in, which means you'll need to loosen it a little bit. Okay, so now when I get close to these needles that are out of work, I'm gonna put them back in work. Okay, I'm gonna check and make sure all my latches are open because what happens when your latches aren't open? You drop the stitch, exactly. Then I'm gonna lift the other side. One crescent plus four or five. Knit around, 
The counter registers one row. Stop when the last needle knits. Reverse. And it registers two on the counter. Crank around so you get close to your needles. Put them back in work, making sure that all your latches are open. Then you're going to lift the opposite side. One crescent plus four or five. And knit around. Until you hear that click or until the last needle knits. Go back in the other direction. Put the needles back in work. Make sure the latches are open. Lift a crescent plus four or five. And registers three until it knits. Registers four. And now we're going to finish that fourth row like that. Okay? Go back around. The hardest part is making sure that your latches are open when you raise and lower those needles. Now we have six. Oops, I went too far. So what do you do if you went too far? Uh-oh. No, all I'm going to do, this is what I'm going to do. Watch. I'm going to lift all these needles. I'm going to go all the way around. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make my counter off. All the way around. Until I get back to where I want to start knitting again. And then being careful to remember to stop before I put these needles back down into work. These are already raised. Get that yarn in the right spot. All right. Back. Now I have a whole bunch of them I have to make sure I get back open. happens, right? No extra charge for watching me latch up the drop stitch. So while you're fixing that, about how many grams does it take? I, it, it takes about 50 grams. So I get two pairs out of a 100 gram skein. Like watching paint dry, huh? <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, there we go. Stop, take a deep breath. <laughs> yep, all that good stuff. Make sure those latches are all open. They seem to be. Now my count's off by one. So that should be seven. And this is eight. So I'm actually going to reset it. So it's right. Drop the needles. Lift a crescent plus five. Move around until the last needle knits. How many needles are in the crescent? I don't know. I'll count the next time. How about that? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So you're going to lift about twenty stitches. Stitches. Sixty. This is a sixty. Yeah. But I, at home, I usually make them on fifty-four um, for women. For men, I I jump up to sixty. But it's really either one works. It's only um, six needles difference. So it's. That's 10 rows. The key to doing this the first couple of times, y'all, is, um, is to just go slowly. I have a friend in California, in Vacaville, who has an alpaca ranch. And she sells dozens of these gloves. I make them for her from yarn she has made from her alpacas. And um, she sells dozens of them. They're really popular. Is the yarn used 100% alpaca? It is 100% alpaca. Is that blue? I'm sorry, what? No, this blue is not. What I what I knit for my friend is 100% alpaca. It um, for gloves it works fine. Alpaca is um, a fiber that has no little barbs on it like wool does. Wool's got um, scales around a core that stick out, and that's why it's so easy to spin. Is because those those barbs catch up. Do you? Great. Very cool. And um, alpaca has scales also, yeah. but they they don't stick out from the shaft in the middle. So that, that the fibers tend to pull away from each other. So if you have a sweater made out of 100% alpaca, it tends to sag because the fibers yeah. keep pulling. Um, if you have a well-twisted yarn, it has less and if you fold the yarn a little bit it is even less but um it works fine for gloves mm -hmm. works fine for gloves have you made hats out of it? i have i make it's hats too hats it's good for hats too because it doesn't have it, it doesn't have the gravity thing happening that would with a, a bigger garment Pardon me? They're getting sheared Monday, actually. Are they? <laughs> Very fun. When I go back um, next weekend, I, I help with, with sorting in uh, the shearing. She's got 45 alpacas. I only have four. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Four is enough. Okay, so I'm up to 12. There's a latch that's closed. Okay, so one crescent to go ahead a little bit further, plus about five. Turn it around and back. We're up to fourteen. Can you see the? Can you see the thumb hole through that on the screen? That does look big. It does look big, but it's not. Okay. 
You're going to be tempted to stop, but don't. Because <laughs> it will be tight on the thumb and it doesn't feel good. It does look huge. That's that's why I mentioned it is because it it does look huge. But I know from experience that it needs to be at least 18 rows. Unless you've got a super giant stitch length. But for like normal fabric, it needs to be about 18 rows. You know, um, for the first time, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Uh, any Anytime you're, you're learning a new skill, for sure. I would also recommend that you try this with waste yarn first a couple of times, just so that you have the feel and the rhythm that's involved, because it's kind of a rhythm of putting down, lifting up, cranking around. And once you've kind of got that rhythm in muscle memory, it will be a whole lot easier. This is 18. Okay, so that's the end. We're going to put these down. Yeah, and you can see that that hole looks super giant, but it's really not. It's because the weight is, is pulling it down. Now, some people get really fancy and they move this stitch over here and this stitch over here. I don't bother doing that. I think it works fine without it. If you wanted to try pair that way, you could, um, but I don't bother doing that. Now we're just gonna knit around 10 rows. All right, stopping at six o'clock again. Now we're going to do some mock rib. And this mock rib is going to be a one by two mock rib. So I'm going to take the first stitch, move it to the second needle, skip the next needle, move the next stitch. So I've got, a, uh, it's going to look like a pearl and a knit, knit, Knit. Okay. Skip one stitch. Now, the key to mock rib is to not forget to take those needles out that you took the stitches off. Because otherwise you'll just end up with a funny hole in the middle and it won't be mock rib. So remember to take those out. How do I know that? <laughs> I've done it more than once. Oops, that isn't right. Nobody told me. <laughs> I messed up. was right. It's this one that's wrong.
it's close enough. It's close enough. I know. I um, I think I moved it. I moved it in the other direction, so it it doesn't look the same. I moved the stitch in the opposite direction, so it doesn't look the same. Yes, it will be fine. My mom always said that's what makes it handmade. You know what? My mom always used to say, only God is perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to stop here at the beginning of the next row. And I want that top to suck in and be a little tighter than the rest of it. So I'm going to, and, and you can see, especially on this one, see how it sucks in in its smaller diameter up here? Because I want it to suck onto my, um, to really grab my fingers. And so I'm going to, I'm going to change my stitch length or my tension. I'm going to make it five clicks tighter. So that means I'm going to turn the dial five clicks to the left. Okay. It's lefty tidy. Remember, it's the opposite from the normal rule. I know. So one, two, three, four, five clicks tighter. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So then I'm going to crank ahead and finish removing needles. All right. Pull out the last of the needles. All right, and now I'm going to reset my counter and do, I already clicked over one, and do 20 rows of mock rib. Now, you have tightened it, so you may find that your stitch is right up and you need to give it a little extra downward pressure. That's okay. Now, this time you're going to stop so that needle number 60 is closed, but needle number two is open. Um, actually, I'm going to stop a little bit before that because I'm going to put the needles back in. You don't have to put the needles back in. You can... Um, you can do this. <laughs> you can do this with... Um, without putting the needles back in and just to put your waist yarn on here. I like to do it because it, it makes it easier for me to do the next part. Make sure your latches are open. fingering All right, so we'll stop right there
Okay, I'm going to cut my project yarn. And I'm going to give myself a really super long tail, like twice what you would usually use for Kitchener. Because we're going to be crocheting the top edge. If you know how to do a, um, a needle bind off, you can do that. I find it very fiddly. So I like to do a, a crocheted bind off, which actually looks the same, but it's easier for me to do. I am going to show that. Absolutely going to show that. All right, so we don't have needle number one in yet, but that's okay. We'll fix that. Move ahead and put the rest of the needles in. Can we find it? Yes. Okay. All that would have is a loop around it, so I'll just stick a loop around it. Okay, when I've been around once, I want to check and make sure that all of these empty needles have received their yarn over. Okay? Because um, it makes just makes it easier to do that, the crochet. And they all do. So just go ahead and put on a comfortable amount of waist yarn. I like to do between 15 and 20 rows, just so I'm sure that my stitches are nice and um, firmly connected. Oh, see, I forgot one needle right there. But that's okay. Won't hurt anything. Okay. That's it. It's really quick to do. All it needs is its bind off. So you see how that sucked in nicely just by making that a little bit, a little bit tighter tension. And you can see that this hole doesn't look like it's gargantuan anymore. It looks like the right size. So I'll just pull it away from my cast on bonnet. Sorry about that. All right. So I'm going to roll back that waist yarn at the top. And you can see that we've got two little bumps here, two stitches, and then a bar. Two stitches, and then a bar. Okay? You're going to do the, you're going to do the crochet bind off in the bars and in the stitches. I'm going to pull this waist yarn through so it's out of the way. First thing I'm going to do is pick up a stitch in the bar. Did you see that? Should I do it again? Okay, here we go. Watch. I insert the hook, pick up the yarn, and pull it through. So now I've got a loop on my crochet hook. And this one is a 2.5 millimeter. But you could do it with a smaller one. Now I'm going to pick up that I'm going to insert my hook into that first bump, okay, that first stitch. I'm going to pick up a yarn and pull it through. It's essentially a, um, it's essentially a slip stitch in crochet. So insert in the, the next internet, stitch. Is, sorry, the internet is laggy, that's why. Okay, <laughs> okay. Insert, pull it through. Insert into the bar, pick up a stitch, pull it through. Yeah, this is my tail. That's, That's my working yarn. Let's put it up there. Okay. Insert. Pick up a stitch. Pull it through. 
insert, pick up a stitch, pull it through. And are you picking that from the bottom up? Yeah, from the bottom up. There's no reason why you couldn't do it the other way. If it felt better to you, do it either way. Whichever way, this this holding it this way just feels better to me. But the it first could, one you picked up was in a in the bar. Okay, just one. Just one in the bar and pull it through. Now they can see it. Sometimes that, sometimes that first stitch kind of hides on you. The first stitch of the pair. Right oh. <laughs> She's joking. She's joking. Okay. No, I'm not. <laughs> okay. Well. Um, yeah. So I'm just picking up each one of those stitches. And, and doing a slip stitch in it. Very easy. Okay, and in the bar. And I picked up, picked up, when I started, I picked up my first stitch in a bar. Oh, okay, so you're doing the bars and the stitches. Bars and the stitches. Okay, that's in the bar. Right. Yeah, the stitch in the bar. <laughs> it's two stitches in a bar. I keep changing my orientation. like watching paint dry, huh? <laughs> Somebody asked, what weight are you using? What weight yarn? This is sock weight yarn. I make socks out of this too. This is actually active, the solid color active yarn. that I get from CSM Supplies. Oops. There we go. If you have yarn that's a little bulkier, um, I would try it on the 54. Because I've found that um, sometimes the bulkier weight goes through that machine more nicely. I but, have sometimes use the six ply mm -hmm. um, on the 54 or mm -hmm. 48. I don't use it for socks, but I use it for, right. the, for gloves. Yeah. Perfect. And then for the fingerless gloves. Right. All right, you come on. There we go. Okay, and then I just go into that first one that I made. Do another slip stitch and pull it out. And then with my with my needle, my darning needle, or my um, tapestry needle, I'm gonna replicate this next stitch by going, taking this through here, and then back, back down, and then I just hide it in here. Okay, do you want me to show you that? Do you need to see that? No, okay. All right, so that's it. And then just remove the waist yarn. It's, um, it's a really fast project. 
The only thing that you need to practice first is that um, the flat fabric. I would practice the flat fabric first. The rest is pretty darn easy. There you go. Done. Is there a way to actually add a thumb afterwards? You know what? Um, you could probably pick up stitches and knit yourself a thumb if you wanted to. There are ways to do that on the um, on the circular sock machine. Actually, there are patterns out there that show you how to do that. They're a little more complicated, so that's why I decided to do the easy version. Okay, so that's it. Wow. Thank you. You're welcome. There's a question earlier, just you one question. Questions? No, here. Oh, uh, yeah. How many rows between hem and thumb hold? 30. 30, 30 rows. Okay, thank and you. And the pattern will be on the Earl Bacher website. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm.